this film's about less than full-time training and paediatric trainees. Yeah. Well, this is a really, really important topic because, I mean, really, I think paediatrics, we have by far the highest number of people who are yeah. less than full-time. Yeah. So it's really, really relevant. But they bring along their own challenges, but also their own things they can bring to the workplace. And Sarita and Marietta really summarise them brilliantly. Yes. It's, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing more of that. Hi, I'm Sarita. I'm Marietta. And we're here today to talk to you about less than full-time training. I've just started as a paediatric consultant, uh, but prior to that, since 2014, all of my clinical training, I've been less than full-time, uh, between 60 to 80%. Um, and I found that that's really allowed me to balance the fact that I've got two children and family life and my clinical training needs. So I am a paediatric neurology grid trainee uh, right now, um, SD7. I have been training uh, less than four times since 2013, having two children, uh, still managing to get onto um, grid training, um, really enjoying the balance uh, of working life and training. Currently about 20% of paediatric trainees work less than full time and that number is going up all the time. And what, where this really started is that we are a female dominated specialty. Um, and so it was principally in the beginning for women who had had children and wanted to um, have work-life balance by being able to have time for childcare and also time at work. But what we're seeing over time is that more and more paediatric trainees are deciding to work flexibly. Um, and that's both um, women and men to look after children maybe be carers for other members of their family, and also for personal reasons. So we know that in terms of work-life balance, one of the NHS improving working life standards is to allow people to, to work flexibly. We know that working in the NHS can be highly pressured, um, and you know it takes a long time, and we don't want our trainees to burn out, and this is a really successful way of making sure that that doesn't happen. And we also know that we have a real richness within our trainees of people who are excellent paediatricians but also want to pursue different interests. So traditionally what there's been has been two categories of working less than full time. Category one has been for people who are taking the decision to work flexibly for childcare or other carer reasons. Um, and the policy has been that those requests should always be accommodated. And category two would be all the other reasons where they've got different interests or, or, or that they want to develop. But we are now moving to allowing both categories for those requests to be accommodated. So anyone who's got a valid reason for working less than full time um, should have that honoured. So how to actually go about it if you decide that you would like to work less than full time? How do you do that practically? So the first step is to contact your training programme director. In London, you can find that out through who that is through the London School of Paediatrics website. Um, and in other deaneries, it should be fairly easy to find out who that contact is. You need to give them some notice, so a minimum of three months so that they can organise the placements well ahead of time. And then you also need to let the deanery know. And in London, that's through an electronic form. The link is there. Um, and that, in that, you just need to fill out what your details are, what level of training you are, what percentage of working you want to do, whether that be between 50 to 90%, and what your expected start date is. So again, that can be accommodated in terms of rotation, and then they can take your CCT into account as well. But the important thing to remember is if you then decide to change your working pattern, so you decide to go back to full time, or you want to go from 60 to 80, or the other way around, for example, that you then fill in the form again so that that can be logged and so that the placements can be arranged accordingly. And again, it's important that you then again contact your TPD to let them know about it. So what does the actual working patterns look like? There are two main models, the first of which is a slot share, and that's what the vast majority of people tend to do. And this is where two trainees will share um, a full-time slot. So what that means is that each person needs to work at least 50%. But then on top of that, it can be negotiated as to what the working pattern is. What most people tend to do is have two people working at 60% so that there's a day of overlap and that tends to work quite well. The advantages of being in a slot share is that you've got someone else as your partner in crime and that can be really helpful. Some of the disadvantage can be is that because your um, days tend to be pre-arranged, you both tend to have fixed days in which you work and then that sometimes what that means is that you can miss out on training opportunities. The other model of working pattern is where someone is working reduced hours in a full-time post. So you're a single person in that full-time post. 
that may be because of circumstance. Um, we know that there are lots of rotor gaps, so it just may be that there isn't somebody who is around for you to share that rotor slot with. Or it may be that actually you're working more than 60%, so you're working 70 or 80%, and therefore it makes sense for you to be doing the majority of the hours in a full-time slot. The advantages of working like this is that you can be a bit more flexible in the days that you choose to work um, and the hours that you want to work and the on-calls that you pick up. But some of the disadvantage will be is obviously that there are those empty slots on the rotor. And although it shouldn't be your responsibility, we know that a lot of trainees feel that um, it feels like it's their responsibility to cover um, those remaining hours. So I'm going to hand over to Marietta now and she's going to talk to you a little bit about pay. I wanted to show you this slide because there are lots of questions from trainees and also from rotor coordinators um, about pay and who pays the trust for less than full-time trainees. And to make you feel better that actually the trusts gain working hours and also extra money by employing uh, less than full-time trainees. So don't feel bad um, uh, working less than full-time in a slot share. Also don't feel bad if you work in a reduced session for uh, full-time trainees as the trust gets paid for the full-time slot. Right, the individual pays and I would like to talk to you about um, the old contract and also the new contract. So old contract applies to any trainee who has been ST3 or above at the time of the introduction of the new contract, which was on the 3rd of August 2016. The old contract uh, applies for four years uh, until the trainee exits programme or uh, August 2022. The new contract applies to any trainees who have been in grades um, under ST3. Whichever contract you are on, please always contact your HR department for your rotor details and for pay. You won't be able to calculate your pay without looking at your rotor pattern and it's very strictly based now on the rotor pattern and working hours. So, a little bit about the old contract. Uh, so, whoever trainees are on the old contract probably are familiar with uh, the setup of the pay. Uh, you have a basic pay, uh, which in broad bands um, literally uh, covers your working hours. So I just wanted to uh, highlight the importance that uh, the broadbands mean if you have 50% you can work and still get paid the same amount. And there are also banding supplements which are counting for your out of hour commitments, meaning that uh, any antisocial hours that you work, if you work frequently you get paid more, uh, band A is 50%. If you work um, in a less uh, frequently um, occurring antisocial pattern, your pay is 40%. If you occasionally work uh, antisocially, it's 20 And if you don't work antisocially at all, then uh, no pay is gained. The new contract, however, is very complicated. It has at least seven, if not more, elements. There is a, a less than full-time trainee guide uh, on the Le London School of Pediatrics website, which um, details a lot more uh, the pay for the new contract. But the major differences are your basic pay is calculated on a 40-hour um, working week. Less than full-time trainees are paid uh, pro rata, so percentage of the full-time trainees. The other major change um, in the new contract is that instead of the 10 um, yearly increments, they are now four nodal points. So your salary only increases up to ST3 and doesn't increase anymore. Uh, I have three links at the bottom um, which are very useful and you uh, should look through them in detail uh, to refer to your pay. If you are running into any trouble, please contact the BMA as uh, they offer uh, router checks, salary checks uh, to make sure that you are paid on the correct contract and paid the correct amount of money. Uh, make friends uh, with your job share partner as you can make each other's lives very easy or very difficult. I think the crucial point is agreeing on working days if you have a slot share partner, which can be sometimes hard, but negotiate and be, be flexible. Uh, be organised, be fair and be systematic. Consider your training needs. Um, you are in charge of your training somewhat um, and you know your training needs probably best. Um, consider the different working patterns if needs be. Um, keep a note of your shifts and times you're working because you are the only person who knows how many hours you are working. 
And remember that you're entitled uh, to reduce subscriptions with the BMA, RCPCH and also GMC. And out of office is your friend. So if you're not working, set your out of office reply because people will know that you're not around. And lastly but not leastly, a work-life balance can take some time to uh, find the balance actually. Uh, however, once you work it out, you will be an expert juggler. There is a social media presence, so uh, the London School of Paediatrics has a, a closed Facebook group for uh, paediatric less than full-time trainees in London um, specifically, and there are also generic less than full-time trainee uh, forums um, on Facebook and also a very good um, physicians uh, mum group UK uh, on Facebook which is very active. And don't forget that you are a less than full-time trainee educator, meaning that your educational supervisor may not have had an experience with uh, less than full-time trainees before, so you are educating them about how less than full-time training works, and there is a link to help you support uh, with that. More help could be found on uh, these uh, websites, um, and I also refer you to the London School of Pediatrics website for less than full-time training guide. So thank you very much. We hope you found it useful. Um, just on a personal note, I mean, I found that working less than full time has really enriched my life and my clinical training. I think don't feel that there's lots of pressure to do everything in the less time that you've got in a week because actually you've got longer time overall. It's uh, a marathon, not a sprint. And I think if you're enthusiastic and you're present when you're at work, it can really work to your benefit. And don't forget that um you are a less than full-time trainee being there for a longer time, but you can still achieve exactly the same things, but in a much richer way than your uh, full-time uh, equivalents. You can still be a great trainee, you can still be an academic, you can still be a, a sports person. You can do whatever you like to do, um, and you are very well supported. And also bear in mind that um, according to survey results, less than full-time trainees are less burnt out. So finding the balance is really, really a good way of training. Thank you very much. That's a lot of information there for our trainees about how to work less than full time. I particularly didn't know all that stuff about pay um, and the, the stuff that you can get extra money for your trust if, the, if you slot share. So that's quite helpful. It's certainly a big sell for the, for the trusts. But I think from the trainee point of view, I think you can really see actually how you can get much more out of a training programme. In fact, it might actually mean that your, your education and your training is better because you you're not running around so fast uh, just trying to cover all those clinical jobs. So I think that's, there's an awful lot to, to pick up that, maybe one to watch again. Mm -hmm.